Okay, we're back, and hopefully, well now let's talk about what you learned here. So hopefully you noticed that hydrogen has one proton, one electron. If you look at the atomic number of, of, of hydrogen, you'll notice that atomic number is one. So the atomic number is e therefore equal to what? The atomic number equals the number of protons. And I guess I'm getting off the screen there. Number of protons. Okay, and that's true. If you look at helium, we have two protons, atomic number of two. Lithium, we have three protons, atomic number of three. It also equals the number of electrons, you'll notice, but it's the protons that determine that atomic number. The reason that the number of protons and electrons are equal is because protons have a positive charge. Electrons have a negative charge. So hydrogen, in this case, does not have a charge, and so what that means is it has one proton one electron, a positive one and a negative one, they cancel out, giving it a neutral charge. Helium, two protons, two electrons, n neutral charge. Neutrons on also have, um, well, neutrons do not have a charge. So protons are positively charged, neutrons have no charge, electrons have a negative charge. If we now look at the atomic mass number, in this case, Atomic mass number is one. Here we have four. Here we have seven. If you look at these atoms, what equals one? What equals four? What equals seven? Well, in the case of hydrogen, you have one proton. Atomic number of one. Helium, you have you have two protons, two neutrons. That equals four. Three protons, four neutrons. That equals seven. So this means the atomic number, atomic mass number. equals the protons with the positive charge plus the number of neutrons with the neutral charge. All right. So those are some of the basic rules when we're looking at the elements. So the atomic number is equal to the number of protons. Atomic mass is the protons plus the neutrons. And in general, well, as long as that element or as long as that atom, atom has no charge, the number of protons and electrons are going to be the same. So let's go back and look at carbon here. So remember we had carbon has an atomic number of 6 and a mass number of 12. So if you were to draw a picture of what carbon would look like, here's what we'd do. We'd have a, we'd have a nucleus, and in the case of a nucleus, that's everything inside this atom here. These are, this is the nucleus. So we've had, we'd have a nucleus here, and in that nucleus, we'd have six protons. And because the atomic number is six, and because the atomic mass number is 12, that means we'd have six neutrons. And assuming this does not have any charge, we're going to have six electrons floating around that atom there. And we'll look at how they, they situate themselves here in just a minute. So now you should be able to look at the periodic table here and choose any element and say and tell me the number of protons and number of neutrons and number of electrons. Let's try one more just to make sure. So for example, let's choose cobalt. Okay, go ahead and pause recording and determine how many protons, neutrons, electrons cobalt has. Okay, so the atomic number is 27. And that means that the protons, the number of protons in cobalt, is also going to be 27. The atomic mass number, which is kind of hard to see here, but is 59. That means that the number of neutrons is going to be 59 
minus 27. So that means we have 32 neutrons. And the number of electrons, because we have no charge here, it's a neutral, neutral atom, is also going to be 27. Okay, let's learn a few more rule, basic rules of chemistry. And this is dealing with isotopes. So we, we've, so far we've determined that the number of protons determines what atom it's going to be. So if we're looking at hydrogen, we'd expect hydrogen always to have one proton. If you add another proton, you no longer have hydrogen. You now have helium. If you add another proton, you have lithium. So the element that an atom is is determined by the number of protons or the atomic number. Look at these three examples of hydrogen, though. We have hydrogen 1, hydrogen 2, hydrogen 3. All three exist. These aren't made up things. These actually do exist in nature. But if you look at the difference here, what makes hydrogen 1 and 2 and 3 different? Well, it is determined by the number of neutrons. So in hydrogen 1, we have zero neutrons. Hydrogen 2, we have two neutrons. In hydrogen 3, we have, I mean, sorry, hydrogen one, we have hydrogen two, we have one neutron, hydrogen three, we have two neutrons. These are called isotopes. They are all hydrogen, and the reason they are hydrogen is because they each have one proton, but the mass number is going to be different. So hydrogen one has a mass number of one, because if you add up the protons and neutrons, you equal one. Hydrogen two has a mass number of two, and hydrogen three has a mass number of three because you add up the protons and neutrons. These are called isotopes. So if you change the number of neutrons in an atom, we call that an isotope. All of the atoms, all of the elements on the periodic table have a certain number of, of common isotopes that are found in nature. Some of those isotopes are what are called radioact radioactive isotopes. You may have heard of this before. But what it means to be a radioactive isotope is when is is determined by the number of of neutrons that you have. So you've, you've probably heard of radioactive things, uh, radioactive uh, radioactivity like um, plutonium, uranium, and things like that. Hydrogen can also be radioactive. So if you look at this chart here, what we have. So we have the element written here. So this is hydrogen. These are the the isotopes. So these are the most abundant isotopes, 1 and 2, and then these are the radioisotopes. So notice that hydrogen 3, this hydrogen that we were looking at in this picture here, this is a radioactive isotope of hydrogen. Hydrogen 1 and 2 are not radioactive. Hydrogen 3 becomes radioactive. Oxygen can be radioactive. The most abundant type, type of oxygen is oxygen 16. Come back to periodic table. Notice that oxygen has a mass number of about 16 when you round up. But if you have oxygen, uh, you can have something called oxygen 18. Oxygen 18 has a no, has few other um, neutrons in it. It's not radioactive in this case, but if you were to add more neutrons, it would become radioactive. There's carbon. You've heard of carbon-12 and maybe carbon-14, carbon dating. So carbon-14 carbon is radioactive. It has two more neutrons than carbon-12. Carbon-12 is neutral, but carbon-14 becomes radioactive, etc. And you can see all of these different elements that become radioactive. So what happens is you add in neutrons... If you, for example, hydrogen, you have no neutrons, one neutrons, two neutrons. As you add in more and more neutrons, these, the nuclei of these hydrogen atoms are going to become unstable. That's what is meant, meant by radioactivity. So this hydrogen-3, this tritium, it's called tritium. Hydrogen-3 is, is, has so many neutrons, it's unstable. It's going to break down over time, and it's going to become something else. It's going to let off radioactivity. And so in anatomy and physiology, or in science, we can use this radioactivity to study different things. So for example, cobalt, radioactive cobalt, we can use that in cancer therapy. So as if you take this radioactive cobalt, uh, cobalt-60, 
you can put it into the body and it's going to let off radioact radioactivity. As it lets off that radioactivity, you can use that to hopefully destroy cancer. Um, phosphorus, they, you can use this as what we call a tracer. You can have somebody ingest radioactive phosphorus and as it lets off this radioactivity, you can follow it through the body and see where it's going. So radioactive isotopes, even though radioactivity can be dangerous, in, it can also be very helpful for doing science. And it's and it's, I guess, also useful to point out that there's radioactivity all around us. There's, we're always coming in contact with radio, radioactivity. As long as it's not a lot, it's not necessarily dangerous. One other thing to point out here. So we've looked at atoms. We've now looked at isotopes. There's one other thing, and that is called an ion. What's happening here is we now have a charge on the atom. So if we were to draw... Let's go back and let's draw our hydrogen ion, a uh, hydrogen atom. Hydrogen, we have one proton, and then around that proton, we have one electron floating around it. In this case, hydrogen would not have a charge. But remember that protons have a positive charge. Electrons have a negative charge. So if this electron were to go away, we, our hydrogen ion here would now just be, our hydrogen would just have a proton. It'd have no electrons. So in this case, we have one proton with a positive charge. This is now a hydrogen ion. So whenever an atom has a positive or a negative charge, we call that an ion. And that is determined by the change in electrons. So, rules we've, we've learned here. This is, the proton is the atomic number. It determines what element we're talking about. If you change the number of electrons, this is going to determine ions. So H positive ions, um, et cetera, et cetera. Neutrons, the protons plus the neutrons equal the uh, atomic mass number. If you change the number of neutrons, we call that an is isotope. And if you have enough neutrons in an atom, then it becomes a radioactive isotope. Now you have all the basic rules of chemistry about atoms and about protons, electrons, and neutrons. So now you should be able to go back to a periodic table and look at each of those elements there and be able to ter determine the number of protons, electrons, neutrons, be able to draw those atoms. In the next lecture, in the next part of this lecture, we're going to look at molecules and we're going to specifically look at electrons because electrons become important when we look at the relationships between atoms and how they bond together. Thank <laughs> you.